take the next caller right now. Welcome, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello? Yes, hello, welcome. This is our new I remember me, Frank? Yeah, we remember you. Yeah, now tell us your first name, we forgot. Is it Frankie or something? Oh, well, my, 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 my first name is really Ephraim, but I like being called Frank. Frank, okay, Frank, thank you so much for calling. Now, did you have a question for Brother Walid? Um, yes. Well, um, I was going to ask him, name, uh, like, because I know how the Quran is really bad, but I was going to ask you if you can name one thing in the Quran that states that anything is good there. Anything good in the Quran? Yes, yeah, there's, there's plenty of good things in the Quran. There's plenty of good things in the Makkian surahs in the Quran. Uh, of course, uh, the Quran talks about there's no compulsion in religion, la ikraha fid din, as you know, people living in the West, we welcome that kind of a verse. Sure. But the problem is, you know, your, 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 your question is kind of alluding to, well, you know, the Quran has many good things, so what's your problem with the Quran? It's like, can I borrow your cup over there? It's like me putting two glasses of water for you right here, and I pull a little bottle, and take out a little dropper and go drip, drip, drip. And then I put the bottle back in my pocket. And you say, what did you put in there? So then I put my dropper out and say, it's something called cyanide. Hmm. Then I put it back in my pocket. Drink up. After all, there is only three drops of cyanide in this glass. The rest is just good water. So bon appetit, go ahead and drink. So in other words, the problem that you have yeah. is that you think because the Quran has good things, and nice verses and peaceful verses in the Makkian surahs, that means uh, the rest is good. No, that's not how it works. Yeah. The devil's mission is to put cyanide. He mixes truth with, with lies. The Quran is truth with lies. Mm. It's, in fact, it gives half truths in many, many scenarios. Mm. The problem with the Quran is that the Makkian surahs uh, is the peaceful verses. The Madanian surahs, that's the Old Testament, if you will. In the Bible, Muslims criticize the Bible because they say, well, look, Joshua killed the Philistines, the Canaanites, and the Jebusites, and, you know, David killed this and that, and, oh, it has lots of violence in the Old Testament. Yet the New Testament came as an era of saying, that's it, it's the era of grace. God did what he had to do in Israel to keep them an isolated people, a separate people, a holy nation, because the Messiah is coming from that region. Now the New Testament comes, different era. In the Quran, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. You got the Old Testament in the Madanian surahs and the New Testament in the Makkian surahs, even though the Makkian surahs are before the Madanian surahs. Yeah. So there is a huge problem. Everything is in reverse. Mm. Evil works in reverse, calling good evil and evil good. And this is, this, you know, this is very much why Muslims can't see the evil that they do. You know, when Muhammad killed the Jews in Saudi Arabia, well, he had a Jewish judge, supposedly. And when uh, Tariq bin Ziyad occupied Spain, well, it's called Futuhat, it's not really occupations. Jawari, well, that's rape and pillaging. You know, what happened to the Armenian Christians? What, uh, over a million Armenian Christians got massacred? You got to think yeah. about that. Why are Muslims committed these massacres? You know, Christians don't commit massacres. And if we did commit massacres, we condemn them. You know, the, there's nothing more than I hear on the Western media about the condemnation of the Crusaders. We condemn the Crusaders so many times because yeah. they killed Muslims yeah. in Jerusalem. We condemn the Crusaders for killing the Muslims in Jerusalem. W one second, Brother Walid. Uh, thank you. Brother Frankie. Hey, Frank. Are you still there? Okay, you're gone. All right. Thanks so much for your call. We appreciate you. He's a young guy, uh, a Christian, but he has a lot of good questions. I appreciate that response. Because if, if Frank didn't uh, get a hold of it, I'm sure some others did. Excellent. The Medinan and the Meccan uh, time, it's the uh, Old Testament and New Testament in reverse. In reverse. Just like the Antichrist and uh, the Mahdi and all of that, it's in reverse. That's Everything what happens is in when reverse. you read the Bible. When yeah. you're Muslim and yeah. you read the Bible, yeah. you begin to see the, revert the, the, the reversalist mentality. The martyr yeah. all of a sudden is a wedding. Yeah. yeah. And the wedding becomes a funeral. Amazing. If you have a piece of instrumental music in the Palestinian areas, yeah. Hamas comes and destroys it. Yeah. Why? Music is forbidden in Islam. Yeah. Yeah. So the wedding becomes a funeral, and the funeral becomes a wedding procession because now he's with the virgins. Amazing. Everything is in reverse. Amazing. Thank you, Brother Walid. Why don't we try to take a couple more callers before the next break? Welcome. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, Brother. What uh, would you do? You have a question or a comment for Brother Walid? Because yeah, we we brother love to Walid, talk, but we got some more callers. Maybe uh, full, uh, 
uh, give us a little idea about the uh, revelation where where you've seen the Codis Vaticanus and you've seen the Bismillah and the two uh, two uh, uh, crosses. And I don't want to keep it too long. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for your call, brother. This is a question. It's not conclusive, but it's interesting. Okay. When you look at the New Testament yeah. in the Greek, and right. you look at where it talks about the 666, yes. where it's translated 666, uh -huh. if you look at the Codex Vaticanus or the old codexes, yeah. you will find that the markings <coughs> resemble very much something that came out of Islam. Yeah. It, it, you will read Bismillah in the Arabic language, yeah. even though it's in Greek, yeah. but it reads in the Arabic as Bismillah, as uh -huh. the mark that is placed on the foreheads, mm. and also the two crosses, which is the symbol of Islam, mm. right in, that, in the codex. Oh. And it's, it's very interesting. But the main thrust of the Bible, it's really talking about putting the mark, what the Bible calls the name of the beast on their foreheads yeah. and on their right arms. Yeah. When we think the name of the beast, we've got to understand, we're not talking about a name of a person. Because as we see how the Bible is an Eastern book, like Jesus, he's called the Emmanuel. His name shall be called Emmanuel, yeah. which is God with us. Yes. Well, his name is not Emmanuel. Yeah. He's not Mexican. No. He's, he's Jewish from Bethlehem. <laughs> Jesus. You know? <laughs> so it, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which yeah. is God with us. Yeah. That's our creed. Right. Our creed is what? God with us. Amen. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Those are not really literal names. Those are our creeds, what we believe he is. Yes. So. In the Bible, it says they will have the name of the beast. Ah, the mm. creed mm. of the Antichrist. And the creed is a blasphemous creed. There's nothing more blasphemous than to say that Allah is God and Muhammad is his messenger. Mm. Imagine us saying, well, in order to be saved, you have to say that uh, Yahweh is our God. There is yeah. no God but Yahweh. Yeah. And Ezekiel is his messenger. Yeah. Yeah. You are here equated Ezekiel. Yeah. As to elevate it among all the prophets yeah. and all the messengers of God, a good you've point. elevated somebody so high, yeah. that's blasphemy. Yeah, you that's see, this point. is why the ones who blaspheme God think that we blaspheme God, when in reality they're the ones that blaspheme God. Yeah, excellent.